go ahead and give us give us a call on our Discord. If anyone wants to slap the link in there, slap some sweet sauce on it. I'm gonna say Hello. That. Hello. Hey, you ready hey. to slap some sweet sauce on it? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm here to redeem myself from last call. I was a bit of a disaster. No. Oh, well, uh, you know, the one with, uh, um, you know, you had like a pretty big guest on. You had uh, Frank Howley or whatever. Sure. Um, may maybe David uh, Jaffe was there. I'm not sure. I don't remember. Uh, my not brain was all, all. Yeah, yeah. Either or. But anyways, yeah, I'm here to like sort of redeem from that. Um, I actually like the grill video. I actually taught the... Um, the Academy of Pronunciation, I I feel like I like that one better. That's more because, like, that drone shot, like, that was that was a great, sh <laughs> like, sort of well scene right there, yeah. Yeah, I also, well, no. I also feel like that video kind of stood on its own. Well, I mean, I guess it was connected to other stuff, but that one was more like its own little statement. And I feel like this one was more kind of like, whoa, what? What did you just what 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 situation did you just drop me into? And it doesn't really like so I can understand. Oh, I mean, I, I probably I, like that one better I too. I feel but. like it was a pretty clear sequel to them. Like I felt the same way about the cameo pronunciation because you had to have seen like the unboxing ring to like kind of understand what was going on. Sure. Actually, that's a that brings up a good question I have. Is Tyler a god, or does he have godlike powers? Or I can't. I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna say. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> not gonna say, I can't. I can't. I can't uh... but, but you know, that's that's a, an interpretation I have. That he's like a god or a hero or something, right? Like special powers. But you know, obviously, I can't say anything about it. So I'm not. I'm not gonna. I'm all. I'm gonna say is. Minute three, 20 seconds in, look in the corner. I'm not going to say, no, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, oh okay. Well, anyways, um, pe people out there don't know what that means. But anyways, yeah, I, I won't make you spoil anything. Sorry for that. I, I, I just sort of like had the idea in my head. I want to get it out. But anyways, no, I'd rather talk about the drone shot that was like uh I, I assume it was more like uh you just did like regular drone shots like nothing too fancy and you like sort of put color correction in there to make we it got we got a military yeah. drone and uh flew it as far as we could unlicensed uh <laughs> over a state yeah. park and um <laughs> Did you actually hear about that? Like, no. like somebody was doing that. Well, no, they want to like they they were trying they to leverage bad. something where you had to like pay fifteen hundred bucks to take to fly over a certain to, zone or something. To, yeah, to take photos in a in like national parks or something. Like they, I don't know if that went through, but yeah. they said it was like um, really were a lot of people taking drones in national parks. Yeah, they said they said that footage? law was basically because like dr like people with um, drones were fucking. They're just up. all over the well, place. Well, actually, I think in Canada the, the law is a little different to do with that, where basically it's like banned in any kind of like city area. So like you you can only like run it around like. Or maybe it is in the U.S. as well, but I, I just know that, like, drones, it's become to a point where, like, you know, a couple of people ruined the fun for everyone. So now it's like you can only sort of shoot around, the uh, like, rural areas, which I mean, I don't mind because, like, this, the kind of stuff I do, I do stuff, by the way. Um, I actually am filming rural areas, but, like, you know, I, I do feel like some people might make good use of like city shots but you do need like a license i think for that kind of stuff yeah yeah, yeah i think um, you have to register everything now basically uh but i don't oh never did it another good question about filmmaking uh how, how do you find like actors because that's like kind of one thing i'm kind of struggling with it's like trying to find like 
Do you like just put a casting call out there or whatever? Because... Uh, well, we're we're very lucky. <clears throat> we're very lucky because we know a lot of actors, or uh, or we or well, basically not, we not in LA, but, uh, California. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're 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 lucky in that we know a lot of actors, even even just here or between here and LA, and then uh. We sometimes put calls out on Twitter for stuff, uh, and we're lucky that we have a fan base that can like reach out about that. But if you don't have any of that, I would honestly say there's actors groups on Facebook that are like, you know, whatever city you're in, mm-hmm. actors, whatever. If you post on there, you'll get a million responses. There are people who just want to be on camera. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Of course, there's people like that. It's more yeah. like, it's more along the lines of like, you know, like, there's film groups out there in, like, my city. It's a small city, but, like, I there's, like, groups. It's just that, like, I, I feel like I don't know if I, like, I feel like the kind of stuff I'm doing, it wouldn't work well with their process or something. Okay. It's kind of hard to explain, but, like, you know, like. A, a lot of like films nowadays there there's like more dramatic stuff and I'm just making like really goofy stuff so sure so yeah that's well you'd be surprised you put a call out people people will come yeah yeah um but man if uh I I no joke I was actually a bit intimidated by the Jeff eating but oh. if I would have like gone on a little longer i would have actually asked um a couple questions about like programming because i'm sort of, sort of trying to like mess around with that a bit mm-hmm. like sort of like where to start with that but i i also would have asked about uh you hear about like like the the weird situation with roms nowadays with roms yeah like you know like uh there was a the Soldier Boy console, you know, tau, oh, yeah, tau, suit or something. yeah, yeah. There's also the Nintendo takedowns, those like ROM sites. Yeah. So I was like, I was thinking like, what was like the best way to like release old games because you know, a lot yeah. of the time it's because it's unavailable. I find. Yeah. It's not because like people want. And there's some stuff that'll never get re-released. I do understand that because, like, um, like uh, for example, like Toy Story game on Genesis. That's a great game, but it's not gonna be re-released because, like, yeah, you, that's not coming around it, again. It, it might, it might, because they did re-release Ducktales and stuff. But like, oh, that's true. Goldeneye, Goldeneye is a better example because that's like a classic and everybody loves it. But it's like. You got Rare at Microsoft, Nintendo, and James Bond. It's like, yeah, it's a it's a licensing nightmare that I don't think will ever get yeah, a release. Yeah. That's really a shame. Uh, yeah, I would have been curious what David Jaffe thought about the ROM situation. Yeah, but uh, my I, perspective on that has always been like, man, if it's not available anywhere, there shouldn't be any issue. If it's hmm. you know I, I, ten, at least ten years I, old or um, something like that. Um, if there's if yeah, there's no intent, yeah. if if they don't show any intent to use it, mm-hmm. it should be yeah. fair, you know. But yeah. and then as soon as it's licensed, yeah, can't put that up anymore. Yeah, I think that's totally fine. But um, I actually think uh, Sega's approach to it was like amazing. But um, the the what I'm talking about here is um, you you, you do know the Sega did a Genesis collection on Switch, right? Yes. Yeah, I got that. I think. Um, well, actually, before that, they put it out on Steam, and they had like the Steam Workshop mods. You know, where like uh, Valve is um, trying to get fans to like basically finish their games through like you know putting in more props and mm-hmm. like gameplay modes and stuff. Well, uh, the 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 cool thing about that is um, that. Um, Sega actually like let people like, put up like ROM hacks basically of like Sonic and stuff. Really? On like on Steam, basically. So it, it's basically like a legal version of ROM hacks. It's like 
I, I just thought like, that's like the best way to like handle it because it's like you can buy like all of them for like I don't know like 30 bucks 30 40 bucks or something and uh that's like 50 50 60 games for that price like you know because it's not like a it's not like a brand new game where it has to cost like you know like 10 bucks or whatever like every game on steam is like 10 bucks for right? yeah so that's why i meant but um yeah because they're old games it's like you know they can sell them off for cheap but you can also like share your um share like you know the kind of stuff that you know there wasn't like a legit way to do it before i find that it's really cool that you know they they sort of let people like have fun with roms and stuff like, give like a marketplace for that i don't know if i'm expressing myself clearly but no yeah no, no i totally i totally get it yeah i think their approach is good too like they acknowledge that it's there but and yeah, they, I, think they basically, I think you're right on target. Like, oh, they opened up like the workshop. So like there's like a Streets of Rage 2 mod where like a Tim Allen noise. Ugh! Like every time like a character dies in Streets of Rage 2, it plays that sound. Like you can basically go on Steam tonight, like buy Streets of Rage 2, and, like go in the mod section, like the workshop. And download like that hack that makes every enemy die go. Ugh. That's a good Tim Allen. That's official too, huh? Is this Tim? No, no, it's okay. it's Buffalo Bill because everyone in the chat thinks it sound like Buffalo Bill. For oh some no, reason. I don't. No, I think you sound like Tim Allen. Yeah. Once you made that Ugh. noise, it sounded. I don't know that you had me fooled for a second. Sound like the last man standing. Does he still make that noise? Does he? Yeah, like, does he do that on last like, man standing? He does, does he go? Uh -huh. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I never. I never saw it. I don't watch TV a whole lot. I don't watch movies. Though. Like every, everything I do is like pretty much old fashioned. I don't know. It's weird. Well, you just what? You're uh, just going to plays? Oh, well, I mean, I don't. I I do film plays sometimes by the way but no i i don't necessarily go to plays for my entertainment i it's like a bunch of like retro movies like 80s and 90s and okay. stuff yeah yeah it's not <laughs> i didn't know i i didn't know how retro you went you know you got like kerosene lamps or something mm -hmm. i didn't know you had an Am amish thing going on oh no no it's not to that point was uh, wasn't there some... wasn't there a movie that I... tim allen was amish with Kir Kirstie Alley or something? Like they became Amish? Uh, that Am sounds crazy? familiar. Wait. That sounds familiar. Well, Kirstie Allen did go Amish. It's, it's called uh, Scientology. Oh. <laughs> uh, but no, but there was a movie. Yeah. Uh, yeah, for richer or poorer. Yes. Oh, okay. Totally. There was that movie. Yeah. Wow. Well, anyway, thank you for your call. Okay. Um. One last thing. Thank you. One, one last. Oh, shit. What happened? Fuck. Sorry. I, the 